Hey guys, Mojo K here. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, it's gonna be I'm gonna gloss over some of these announcements. Uh, this is my alternate account, by the way. That's why all these are new. But basically, um, we're getting this uh, FF4 event again, just like we had the other event come back. This is um, also coming back for anybody who's missed it. Um, the main boss is gonna be Golbez, and a lot of elemental stuff is gonna be useful here. Uh, this actually came out way back when Lightning had just been released, and she was really good in this event uh, due to her elemental coverage and everything. Um, so we're getting like Dark Helm back again, Lilith Rod in case people missed it. Although we've had a lot of rods um, since then, but back then a plus 60 mag rod was a really big deal. And then of course Trust Moguls, things like that. So we'll definitely, um, well anybody who hasn't cleared it already will definitely want to do it. Um, <clears throat> We're also getting a new trial boss, and I haven't really looked into this um, yet, but I mean, I do know the fight in Final Fantasy VI, and as well as Record Keeper, so it's kind of cool that they're bringing these guys back together, but that's not the purpose of this video. The main thing that I'm going to be covering in this video is going to be the, um, the upcoming banner and the new characters that are being introduced. Really quickly, let me just talk about this story event as well. Um, it's basically going to be like a number of quests and missions that we just kind of go through this map. The layout's a little different, but I don't think it's going to be anything really weird or, or confusing. And we're going to have some potential rewards here. Um, most importantly to me are the um, Awakening materials. You know, we're going to get some pure crystal, which are very hard to get, very rare. And also we're getting some limited equipment that might be useful for some people. Uh, Gaia Blade is our first uh, free Earth Elemental Sword. So anybody who hasn't been able to farm up um, Eileen Sword or something like that, this could be useful in certain cases. And also Widowbrim is a nice looking hat. Uh, not nice looking so much really, but um, the attack is 18 which is good and it also gives some MP and some defensive stats as well. So for a free, free item that's pretty good. But again the meat of this video is the new summons that are coming up. And I have to say that these are... Um, pretty unfamiliar to me, but after doing a little bit of research or looking into the wiki, I think these are very interesting and I'm kind of excited because they're so different from what we usually have. Um, so, okay, the top prize, as is often the case, is going to be a base 5 star DPS unit. And uh, Fallen is a Chocobo Knight, but he is pretty unique in some ways. Um, we'll talk about the details in a little bit, but his Trust Master reward is good. Attack 28 and 60 defense and nullify his disease and stone. So this is going to be a really good helmet for um, anybody who can equip this. I mean, we had black had um, black cowl uh, being the best, you know, headgear for the longest time. But now we have a really good helmet, although it's not going to be as um, widely equipable as the black cowl was. This is going to be a really good option here. He does have a few abilities again that we'll talk about here, but. Another cool thing is that they've upgraded him in Global. And what I like about this is that they're basically recognizing their mistakes from the Japan version. You know, they're seeing that they put in all these characters that were completely useless or overlooked, you know, in favor of the meta, more meta characters. Um, so rather than having like these big banners like Orlando and then just having a whole bunch of banners that nobody cares about, they've decided to go in and kind of tweak these uh, lesser known characters to make them more viable. So we'll talk about this upgrade, but this is really, really cool that they're doing that. Uh, the second unit on this banner is gonna be a Sav Maker. Um, we haven't had any character like this really that's been featured, so this is a really interesting and cool character that we'll cover as well. The Trust Master Reward boosts Spirit by 40% and increases the potency of healing items during battle. So on top of the really big Spirit boost, which would be really good for any healer, it also makes healing items more useful, um, which is kind of like a double, you know, boost. I mean, you're, you're boosting up your Kirajas and spells like that, but then if you need to chuck a, you know, what is it, like an X potion at somebody, it might actually be useful now. So this is really cool stuff too. <clears throat> uh, Amelia is another six star uh, unit that starts at four stars, so, you know, she's probably going to be viable as well. Um, her Trust Master reward is actually really strong. Uh, 49 defense and spirit is really high as far as keeping your characters alive and it also boosts attack by 30% so if you have a character that uses guns this would definitely be best in slot. 
crazy good defensive stats and also really good attack boost. 30% is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, even if guns aren't necessarily the best in the game. Um, unless you're talking about Olive, of course. Again, we'll cover these more in detail in a bit. And then we have our booby prize as usual. Um, base 3 star unit that only goes to 5 stars. I'm not going to cover her too deeply, but what's important about her to discuss is the Trust Master reward again, which is a 90 attack sword, uh, which is water elemental, which is also pretty unique right now in global, and it enables dual wielding of swords, just like Abel's knife did. So they're really pushing this dual wielding into the game a lot more, so that you know if people haven't farmed up a ton of Zidanes, there's other options for you. Although there are some drawbacks of this, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So let's get into the details right now. Okay, so real quick note on Camille. Um, she has an ability that boosts water and earth re resistance by 50%, and the fact that you can get both of those elements in one go can be useful situationally, but again, she's not a six-star unit. You have other units that can do things better in general, like Minfilia, who's a free unit as well. <clears throat> not to mention Marie or Sirius. And pretty much the only reason you'd really want to pull for her is for that dual-wielding sword ability, but the drawback to that is that you have to equip two swords, so you can't make use of two passive boosts, for instance. You can make use of just like something that boosts sword uh, attack when you equip a sword, but you can't have like a sword boosting passive on one uh, for the one hand and then equip like a lance or a great sword on the other hand to take use of another passive boost. So there is a drawback to that, but for a lot of um, entry to mid level players, it could be a useful um, TMR because it is a decent weapon, it has an element that's still kind of rare, and it <clears throat> has that in a dual wheel, so not the greatest thing in the world. In my opinion, Abel's knife would be a little bit better for people like Setzer, um, because it doesn't lock him into using two swords or using the water element in every case, but um, it is definitely a good TMR and noteworthy as well. So anyway, with that, <clears throat> we'll talk about Amelia, who is a physical damage and a support. Some interesting stuff here, and that's going to be the word of the video. I mean, I use that word a lot to begin with, but especially for this video. So her stats are okay. They're 134 is kind of low. Nothing really stands out. It's just kind of average across the board. Pretty limited weapon selection here. Um, so these are kind of like old school abilities that really aren't going to stand out in the meta. Kick is a weak AoE. Uh, leg shot and arm shot combined are basically like a full break, except you have to use two turns to get the full effect of it. So when full break was a little bit more rare, this was like a bigger deal, like on Mustadio or, or whoever else had it. But nowadays with full break so easily attainable, I mean even Rain has it, it's not something that you're going to really want to waste, you know, alternating turns on. Uh, Ricochet is a nice AoE ability. 1.8 is a decent multiplier for an AoE, but it also has a 30% stop to all enemies, so uh, something you might want to consider using. Rapid Fire, it has an average of 3.5 multiplier, but it's just really unreliable because it can hit as um, little as one time, uh, up to six times, so it's kind of like, if you want to roll the dice on that, it's kind of like a barrage type of ability, but with more variance. Trigger Happy is probably... Uh, one of her best abilities because it's the same thing as Emboldened that Refia has. Uh, 45 boost to attack and defense is really good, especially because it's 5 turns. So if you wanted to use somebody else like Yishtola as your healer, having Amelia along to do this boost to your party would you know cover that gap very nicely. Killer Bullet, um, I'm assuming this is probably going to be like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it probably will be like a single target, um, a single hit ability. So maybe it could function as a combo ender or finisher. Uh, with the defense ignore, it basically works out to a 2.8. So not the best thing in the world, but you know, depending on the speed and the animation, it could be a nice finisher. And then we have Disorder, which is a little bit higher multiplier AoE uh, uh, compared to Ricochet, but it doesn't have that stop effect. Passive wise, uh, she does get some decent passives, like up to 40% attack, and has like the innate dual wield with guns, uh, single handed guns at least. So, again, we're seeing a lot more of this dual wielding pushed on us for free, which is nice for a lot of players. 
Um, but overall, the stats are kind of underwhelming, and you have randomly like Kiraja here. I guess in some cases, this you know having a backup healer and somebody who can do a boost like this could be very handy. But um, there's really not like a whole lot of damage coming out of this character, unless you know again as a finisher it could be kind of useful. So kind of a versatile character, but that doesn't really stand out in any real way. But could be nice as a backup healer, as a backup um, support. Uh, overall, not the most exciting character, but could function pretty well in some party compositions. Um, Ilias, <clears throat> I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a salve maker. Uh, the picture's not here for some reason, but it's basically that potion maker uh, looking dude. So I think that this is probably the first of his kind. Maybe there's like those free characters like Mel, you know, that has a TM that's you know, nobody really got, but I don't know. I think this is going to be kind of useful. So the stats are kind of underwhelming again, but the spirit is pretty high. Um, weapon selection is pretty limited, but as you'll see, that doesn't really matter too much. So Sav is like kind of a weird thing that I've actually personally never used, but it sounds like it could be useful because it turns um, single target healing items into AOE healing, group healing. So that could be very useful. Um, there are some status infliction stuff here like Paralyzed Poison, situationally useful, but probably not going to be used too much. Uh, recovery is actually very useful um, because all these status ailments can be really debilitating, so having an AoE status uh, healing is very useful, uh, utility-wise. Now Drink is something that I never really used as well. It allows use of drinkable items, which are basically like body boost and blah 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 you basically boost up stats um temporarily by using like potions and stuff uh, let me just take a quick look here what kind of drinks are available yeah like body boost mana boost um berserk if you would want that uh, but these are all 20 percent so i would never see a situation where you'd want to use that because we have much stronger buffs uh, available already so this is just kind of like weird this is a relic of the old game uh, before everything started kind of like power creeping. So this is something that I would never use. Now there are some things that I will definitely use on this character if I were to use him. <clears throat> uh, special recipe really unlocks like some crazy cool abilities. Uh, it also decreases the damage taken to the caster um, as a side bonus. But what's more important is that it enables access to these abilities. And I'll also talk about Extract right now because it's kind of like similar. On top of doing like a nice little AoE attack, it also enables these abilities as well. Um, yeah, before I go down there, I'll just quickly get these out of the way. So Guard Serum bre increases break resistance. Uh, this is something that we don't really think about too often. We think about breaking the bosses and enemies, but we don't really think about preventing being broken by the boss or enemy. So. This is an interesting mechanic uh, that we're, we're basically, you know, becoming break immune uh, to your whole party for three turns. That's pretty cool. Inflict disease. Eh, this is a waste of a turn. Disease is like probably the least impactful status ailment. It's basically 10% off your stats uh, all around. Um, and then you can increase resistance to all status ailments for three turns. So you can increase break resistance to your allies and you can increase status ailment resistance. So. A lot of utility in this character already, but again, let's go down to the special recipe and extract <clears throat> specifics. So special recipe, once you use that, you can use any one of these abilities. HP enhancer, 100% HP restore restoration to all your allies. I don't need to explain why that's good. That's really awesome. Um, basically turns, their, turns this uh, character into sort of a um, Tillith. Uh, you know, with this full heal kind of thing to, to your whole party, although it does take a couple, uh, it does take a turn to set up. MP Enhancer, uh, turn for turn, this actually restores more MP than even Ling's ability. Uh, power Down, this is a nice uh, kind of AoE full break if you want to use that, if you're fighting a group boss or something like that, I guess. Uh, and then Extract enables these abilities, which um, for like one big turn, you can really increase the damage output of your party. 80% is really good, even if it's for one turn, you know, you could end up 
one-shotting a boss or you know really hitting them when it counts uh, you can also increase your defensive stats by a ton so if you know a big attack is coming up like Bahamut for instance you can really buff up your party get ready for that and then you can also decrease resistance to all elements to your enemies so these are really good abilities that are um, activated by using these things and if I were to use this character then you know these would definitely be very appealing to me and then the limit burst is basically just um, a very strong fire flask of sorts because it has random status ailments and does damage um, so yeah th that character is not going to do that much damage because of the stats aren't that great you don't see any like real attack passives here but um, you know, it's just nice that you can potentially inflict status ailments for free. Uh, and then the passives are like um, ho-hum here, but then the pharmacology ones are kind of interesting because you can increase the potency of your healing items. Again, I think this is the first time we've seen things like this. So imagine doing um, like an X potion. Instead of doing like a measly 1,000, you can now do 3,000 per use. And it also passively increases your MP. So very interesting character. Uh, I'd be very curious to see how people can use that in their party compositions and situationally this could be a really uh, high utility character to use in tough fights. Okay, so Fallen is the jackpot of the banner. Looks really awesome. Um, reminds me a little bit of Yun, of course, because they're both riding uh, chocobos or birds, but um, I would imagine that this character is going to be a little bit better. So let's talk about First of all, um, the Rider's Helm we already mentioned is a really strong helmet. I think it's 28 attack and 60 defense and a couple of status resistances. So uh, already it's a nice TMR to have, but um, the stats are really good too. So you have respectable HP, pretty high attack. Uh, the weapon selection is going to be pretty limited, but um, you're definitely going to want a spear on this guy and we'll see why. So Blade Blitz, eh, you guys already know that, pretty outdated at this point. Osmos Lance is nice because you can never run out of MP or you know at least in the short term you can drain the enemy once at least in a fight to refill your MP a little bit. Uh, Chocobo Dive is something I would never use because it's basically a jump that with the jump delay the one turn thing for only 2.3 it's really not worth it unless you're trying to get out of the fight for a turn. Uh, provocation this is like a <clears throat> tank type of ability that goes on a DPS which is kind of weird. But uh, this could actually be useful um, in cases where you're fighting, for instance, a wind boss, a boss that you know would do a lot of wind damage. And the way that he, um, Fallen, has wind resistance and um, evade, this could be more useful than you think. So, you know, situationally, it could be a cool skill. Um, extend is an active ability that uh, increases wind resistance by 70% to all allies. So this is on the level of a bar... Um, Eroga, uh, very cool. Extra utility it never hurts. Uh, Vortex is kind of like a setup skill. So on top of being like a decent AOE ability, you're also decreasing the wind resistance by 50% to all uh, enemies uh, for five turns, which is good. And it adds wind element to your physical attacks, which is uh, not as important as the the wind debuff. <coughs> Excuse me, because when you couple this with Sonic Blast, you're basically getting the same effect as like an Eileen um, or Orlando ability, you know, like um, the way that they decrease their respective element resistances while hitting them with a 2x 50% uh, defense ignore. So this is the wind version of that basically. But instead of coupling that in all in one skill here, you do have to set up with Vortex, which is a little bit of a um, disadvantage, but at the same time, it's made up for by giving him this evasion for three turns, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. So maybe turn for turn, you're not dishing out as much damage as some of those other characters, but you're making this character really hard to hit, really hard to kill. Um, you're trading off a little bit of that damage, a little bit of that turn efficiency for, you know, really good defense. So this is a really interesting character. Again, I'm saying that word a lot, but he is. So yeah, same multiplier, same everything. You just need to do the setup skill first. Um, <clears throat> passive wise, he has some cool stuff. Reducing counter might actually be useful because um, I rarely ever see a reason to want to encounter mobs. I mean, I don't do like the whole exploration leveling anymore. You know, it's basically all Gigantors at this point of the game. 
in the meta. So I think reduced encounter overall is going to be a very good thing. Um, auto refresh always nice. The attack passives are really good. 30% here. 50% when you equip with a spear. So you want to have at least one spear on this guy for sure. Um, the ideal setup would probably be a spear, and then the other hand would be a sword with um, Dark Knight's uh, soul, I believe it's called. So yeah, definitely tons of damage potential here. Speedster is something that was added to global, uh, as we pointed out earlier. This is just crazy stuff to me. Like, passive wind resistance 50%. You get a 30% evasion, which makes this guy... Um, potentially an arena monster. Um, evade one physical damage taken for one turn. I don't know if this is just like a one-time thing or if he's evading every time which is like crazy to think about um, but either way this is all really good stuff that's gonna make a noticeable difference in global. Sometimes they add stuff to global that's just kind of like nobody cares about but this is something that you can't ignore. And then you have a chance to counter physical attacks with decreased wind resistance for three turns to one enemy so let's say the enemy attacks, um, triggers this counter, it decreases the wind resistance by even more than your vortex would. So not only are you going to get extra damage with the 75% debuff, you don't have to do vortex anymore. So if you counter with this, you can go straight into Sonic Blast and do a ton of damage. So um, this character is just really, really juicy. I really like it. Um, passive resistances can never hurt as well, but stat-wise, overall, very good stuff. Uh, limit Burst is kind of um, uh, nice to have as a free uh, you know, damage source, but also a de uh, nice strong de debuff. Uh, starts out at 30%, which is kind of like not that remarkable, but if you do level it up to 54%, I mean, on top of this and the wind debuff, you can just do massive damage with this character. So I am really surprised at how much I want this character now um, because I hadn't even really I had heard of him I had seen his name around but he wasn't something that was really part of the meta or people talked about a lot but now I suspect that some people are gonna really want this guy so <clears throat> very interesting stuff all right last but not least as a bonus let's talk about Kelsis who's a free character that they've introduced into global uh, you can summon him with shards that they've been handing out through the event and just kind of slowly in our inbox um, it's very interesting that they do stuff like this because it's not like something we're expecting or calling for, but they just throw it in as a bonus, which is really cool. They call him a black mage and he looks like a black mage, but really you should think of him as a physical damage dealer. His Trustmaster reward is actually, uh, I don't want to use the word interesting again, but it has decent defensive stats, I guess. But, you know, Analyze is something that you might want to use time to time, but high power increases your limit burst gauge by two every turn. So this is equivalent to that um, recent, I think it's Jack TMR, especially for characters that rely on uh, their limit burst, as Kelsis does, spoiler alert. Uh, this is going to be a really good TMR to use. <clears throat> so let's go into the stats a little bit. His attack is the highest stat, which already tips you off to how he should be used. Um, his l equipment selection is... Uh, pretty varied. I mean, you don't really see too many characters that use rods, but then also use axes and guns and these other things. So, yeah, very, very uh, unique character. These A lot of these special abilities are things that you're not really going to use. You're not using him as a mage, per se. Uh, so, he does cover some elements um, here, but again, I would never use this, or this is not how I would use him. What I would do is potentially... Um, <clears throat> Well, if he's getting hurt or there's some big physical damage coming up, I guess you could use Missile Shelter to mitigate that. Um, does a little bit of damage, AoE damage, which is a respectable multiplier, but it also mitigates damage for him. So, you know, situationally, you might want to use that. But I think Metal Territory is going to be the crux of how you use this guy. So not only are you making him a total tank, like... Uh, not role-wise, but just, you know, he's going to be really hard to kill. 80% defensive spirit for three turns, and he's healing the stuff, regening over three turns. But he also increases his limit burst gauge fill rate 200%. And again, um, coupled with his TMR, this is going to be really fast limit um, burst gauge fill rate, which is very necessary because basically everything that he does that's really OP uh, is triggered by his limit burst. So passive-wise, we'll just talk about this real quick. 
He does have the two fist um, innate ability, which is nice. His attack passive is only 30%, but I think that he might be overpowered if they made it any more than this. So, um, yeah, it's nice that he can do the double fist if you don't want to dual wield him and get take advantage of multiple passives. And then we have limiter cut, <laughs> increase limit burst gauge six per turn. So he's basically filling up his limit burst gauge like immediately all the time. And once he does, um, uh, okay, so he has some magic abilities here as well. But again, you're not using him as a mage, or I wouldn't at least. Uh, his limit burst, what it does is it increases his stats by insane amounts. Like this is just crazy. Like I, I, I struggle to think how this is going to play out um, in actual meta. So crazy stat boost to himself for three turns. But then for the next three turns, he also has um, Crushing Vice, which is a super powerful um, single target ability, 5x physical damage. So not only is he like impossible to kill, when he uses these abilities and you know buffs himself up but he's gonna have crazy damage so you know against one enemy this is gonna be like unkillable tank who also dishes out crazy damage so i'm really excited about this character um even if he turns out to not be as amazing as he seems it'll be fun to use something that's so unique so um, that's my little overview of kelsis i look forward to seeing videos of him or making videos of him but anyway that was a lot to cover uh, i hope you guys stuck with me and um hopefully i didn't botch it too quickly because i did try to run through it pretty quick and um you know when i go that fast there's a chance that i miss something but yeah i just think there's a lot of interesting cool stuff coming into global i think that they definitely don't um this is not one of those games where they just lazy lazily like translate japan over to global do do nothing in the new they basically really think about how to keep this game fresh and to keep things um fresh in between notable banners as well so i really like what they're doing but um yeah tell me your thoughts on some of these characters maybe i'm overhyping some of them maybe i'm not maybe i'm missing something but i just wish i had a lot more lapis <laughs> to pull on this banner um or fallen and everything so anyway um thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time